Thank you. Come on, somebody give Jesus some praise this morning. Not a golf clap, actual praise. Come on, lift him up this morning. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you as King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you. We love you. Amen, amen, amen. Slap by fives with a couple of people and grab a seat. Come on, somebody. I am so excited this morning to be here. I could barely sleep uh, last night. I am so honoured uh, to be here at Breakthrough this year. And uh, I, wanna, I just want to, first, before we go any further, thank Pastor Brent and Patricia for having me. I know I said a lot on Thursday night. Copy, paste, repeat. Still means the same, um, but uh, genuinely honoured to be in, in your pulpit this morning. So thank you so much for having me. Uh, Pastor John, everything you said about Pastor Brent last night for you, copy, paste, repeat, it's the same thing. Uh, it's uh, genuinely so grateful for you. I, I love you so much. I consider you my spiritual father. And it's an honour to, uh, to, to speak um, with you in the room this morning. Um, and I have had many nervous tingles. Um, so I'm not going to look at you too much, but it's not, please don't be offended. Uh, this morning, I am so excited to be here. Uh, as uh, Pastor Joel said before, I've just had a baby. Yes, I, me, I just had one. Um, my wife was also involved. Uh, she arguably did it all. Um, so uh, that's wonderful. Here's a photo of our family. I know, look at him, he's a smudge. Oh, Bowden Samuel Slade is his name, and, uh, and I love him. And I know what you're thinking, man, she is so blessed to have you in her life. And you are right, she is so very blessed by all of this. Um, no, I, I love you so much, uh, and, and, uh, and it's, it's awesome. I miss them. I can't wait to get back. Let's get into the Word this morning. If you're taking notes, uh, I, want, I want you to write down the title of the message. It's called Bitten, But Not Beaten. See, if, it, it comes from this question of if Jesus, if when He paid the price of His life for us was to guarantee us life in all its fullness, why is it that so many of us are struggling to, to, to survive, let alone thrive? And I think it's because for so many of us, we've settled with things that we should have shaken off long ago. And so I believe this morning that by the end of today, we're gonna shake off the attack of the enemy. We're gonna walk out of here with a fresh freedom, actual freedom. Freedom is possible for you today. We're gonna walk out of here with freedom and a fresh fire. I'm so excited. I gotta just, just calm down. Harry, breathe. Lord, we thank You for Your presence here this morning. We thank You for what You've already done. Lord, I pray that You would help me just graft into the vine this morning. Help me flow with what You're already doing. Lord, we love You. We worship You. We honour You. We thank You in Jesus' Name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Boats. I, I, I don't like boats. I don't trust boats. There's something about them that just, I don't know. I just How does something so big like not sink? Do you know what I mean? It's like, it just doesn't feel legit. I get in the water and I don't float, you know? How, how is it that boats, I know there's technical people in the room who are smarter than me who could tell me all the radiotrotical, physical stuff. But I don't care. I don't trust them. It doesn't, I don't feel safe. I think my trauma stems from uh, being on the Inter-Islander one day. Uh, we, we grew up in Wellington and they say about Wellington, you can't beat Wellington on a good day. Uh, and I agree, but the problem is you can't find Wellington's good day. When you do, it's awesome, uh, but it's, wow. Um, the, the thing about Wellington is when it, when it rains, it's often combined with wind. And, and it doesn't rain. It rains beautifully here in Auckland. I know we had a thunder and a lightning storm. I was like, this is a beautiful thunder and lightning storm. In Wellington, no. Uh, when the rain falls combined with the wind, it hits you in the face very, very painfully. Um, and when we were on the Inter Islander, we were sailing to the other side. Thank you. I'll be here for the next 30 minutes. Um, the, 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 the thing about the boat was that it wasn't like just sailing, it was like storming to the other side, you know? And, and, and it was me, my brother, my sister, my dad. The, the boat was going this way, the wind and the rain was going this way. Me, my brother, my sister, my dad, and we were having a great time on the boat, you know? We're like, yeah, you know, this is awesome. And, and, and I looked at my brother, it was me, my brother, my sister, and my dad. I looked at my brother and he was starting to change a different colour, like, we are relatively pale. Uh, I was born in Scotland. My family bloodline is Scottish. I'm whiter than snow. Uh, and so is my brother. And, and he started to change an off green. And I realised something was happening on the inside of him. And then I quickly realised that it wasn't just happening on the inside of him. It was happening on the outside of him. As he, as he vomited, the, the, the vomit combined with the rain and the wind. The boat was going this way. The rain was going this way. The wind was going this way. And it came out of his mouth. Me, my brother, my sister started heading towards her. Now, my sister, she, she loves a thrill ride. You know, she's like, yeah, this is so much fun. Ah! Yeah. And she's like, ah, how good is this? 
Now, now, first-hand vomit, not great. Second-hand vomit, I put to you, not greater. You know, it's not, not very good. So now, just me, my brother, my sister, my dad, she's starting to gurgle up some stuff. Out of her mouth comes the vomit. To me, my brother, my sister, my dad, my dad, now he's like a combination of like Gandalf the White because of his white hair and Neo from the Matrix. Because in this moment, the vomit comes out heading towards him and he just pulls this move. It's whoa, you know, it's like unbelievable. Next to him though was an old lady in a wheelchair and the vomit just said, no, but imagine how good that would have been if that was true. That would have just made the story just that much better. The, the, the reason I tell you the story is, to be honest, um, it's a good story. Um, and it loosely links to a guy in the Bible whose name is Paul, who was in a similar situation, but his boat didn't make it. Turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 28 this morning. We're going we're gonna to have a look at this guy named Paul. Here, loosely, but it's there. Um, it's there. Paul, Paul's been in a storm, but his boat doesn't make it. It's going to come up on screen as well. The Bible says this in the New Living Translation. Once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Maltesers. Malta, sorry. <laughs> I'm ready for some afternoon tea at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, on the island of Malta. The people on the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, a murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. Verse five says, but Paul shook off the snake into the fire, I love this, and was unharmed. Someone say unharmed. The people though, these friendly people, they waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. Yes, very friendly, wonderful, thank you. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided he was a God. But Paul, verse 5, shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. Bitten, but not beaten. I love this story in the Bible. It's, it's so cool. It's such a vivid story. The, the Bible is telling us about the, the, the guy named Paul and, and he, he lands on this island and he's welcomed by these people and they make him a fire. And it, it's good, like it warms him up. It's like you're, you're wet, covered in sea water. Let's, let's dry you off, get you warm. They start making the fire and Paul does what every good man should do is find more wood for the fire. So grab some wood for the fire, a bundle of sticks, grabs them, takes them to the fire. And the Bible says, as he's laying the wood, the sticks on the fire, a poisonous snake driven by, yeah, you like that? That's kids ministry. That's eight years of kids ministry right here. Welcome. (laughs) A poisonous snake driven by the fire bites him on the hand. And the snake dangles on his hand and everyone's like, oh, quick, we don't, we don't have Netflix. Quick, grab some popcorn. This is the closest thing we got to a thriller right here. Let's see if he dies, you know, like... And, and, and Paul, the Bible says, looks at the people. He, 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 he just shuts off the snake back into the fire yeah. and was unharmed. Right. It's, a, it's an interesting story because he was bitten but not beaten. Right. And the truth is for us, the one thing that unites humanity is pain, problems, tests and trials. Right. We, we are all going to go through life and get bitten by different things. Yeah. It's, it's not something we choose, but it's something that just happens around us. And uh, although our snake bites might be different, we are all going to get bitten. And in fact, for some of us, this last few years hasn't felt like just one bite. It feels like the slow chokehold of an anaconda around your neck. It's like, <laughs> you're like, please stop. But I, I wrote a small list of some of the bites that we experience. These are a very encouraging list. Um, now, if I say this and you've gone through this, don't lift your hand. It's awkward for everybody. Just think about it in your head. But some of the things that we get bitten with in life, depression, anxiety, financial pressure, marriage, not mine, maybe yours. My, look at my hands, they're low. Um, unmet expectation, anger, sexual impurity, comparison, rejection, sickness, fear, A death in the family, a difficult boss, discrimination, violence and hate, addiction, betrayal, loss, family dysfunction. Just maybe even it's just family, you know? Hallelujah for in-laws. Woo! You know, like, maybe not mine, for yours. But but I need need you to know today, church, Breakthrough Conference, you're going to get bitten. But just because you're bitten doesn't mean you have to be beaten. 
You can go through your life bitten by things that come against you and stand firm on what Jesus did for us on the cross and on His blood, we can be bitten, but not beaten. We can be bitten, but not beaten. It's important to remember that we're actually in a battle. Like, I think it's easy in a country like New Zealand where life's pretty good most of the time. I know we've got our problems, but it's pretty good. It's easy when we come to a conference and we're in the presence of God and we see God move like He just did before. And it's like, clearly God's doing some stuff in people's lives. It's amazing, incredible. We're in a battle. But then we leave conference, we go back to the same house we left from before and we quickly forget that we're actually in a battle. But the the battle that we're in, it's not a battle against flesh and blood. Our world right now is pumping all of these flesh and blood battles. And as Christians, we have to be careful that we don't get caught up in all these battles in a faraway land but that we realise that our battle as Christians, as men and women, sons and daughters of Jesus, our battle is spiritual. Spirit and principality. And and in this battle, there are two teams, right? There are two teams. There's a a bad team captained by the devil. And woo, you know, not good, you know. But then then the good team is captained by Jesus. And that's the one that we all belong to. Hallelujah. Praise God. And when Jesus died on the cross, he, he, He conquered once and for all, the power of sin and the grave. And so now for us, we've got to remember as we go through life that we have access to this life. In fact, Jesus said in the Bible, John 10, 10, the thief, that's the devil, comes to steal, kill and destroy. This is the good news, friends. I have come, not Harry Slade, Jesus Christ. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. They may have life and have it to the full. I love this. I love this so much. This is so encouraging. The New King James Version translates fullness to abundance. Woo! Abundance. Abundance of life is available for anybody who clings to Christ. I love that. I love that. But here's the problem. An abundance of life doesn't mean an absence of trials. We've got this confused, I think, in some churches, not this church, but other churches, definitely not your home church either, the other ones. But... With those other ones, you know what I'm saying? You know, we all know them. Um, <laughs> but I think, we've, I think we've confused this. I think we've preached a gospel that's like, if you come to Jesus, everything's going to be fine. If you come to Jesus, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, man. All good. But the problem is that that's not actually true. Like it is partly, but it's not completely true because... Even though we have Jesus, I mean, you read the Bible, Jesus says, you're gonna have many trials. Jesus tells his own disciples, oh, hey, by the way, guys, um, they hated me and they're gonna hate you too because of me, okay? (laughs) Sweet ass, just like peace. You know, it's like, wait, 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 hold on, what what are we doing here? But the truth is, is that when we do submit and surrender our lives to Jesus, we have access to awesome things. The, the, The first thing we get is when we come to Jesus, we receive the forgiveness of our sin. We then receive the filling of the Holy Spirit and then we receive the empowerment to overcome. John 16, 33 says, I've told you, this is Jesus speaking, I've told you all these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. We love that first bit. Yeah, Yeah, peace, close the Bible. It's good, I'm peaceful, you know. Open it back up, you will have trouble. But take heart because I have overcome the world. Come on, somebody. Jesus has overcome the world. What Jesus is saying here is He's saying, guys, you're gonna face trials. You're going to be bitten, but I've overcome the world. You don't have to be beaten. Bitten, but not beaten. Have you noticed, like, if you've ever read the story, have you not? Sorry, I know we read the whole story today. So let me start again. Because we've read the story, um, have you, did you notice when, Je- when Jesus, when Paul got bitten? It wasn't when he first landed on the island. Right. It wasn't even when he picked up the, sn- the sticks that the snake was in. Right. When was it? It was when he stoked the fire yeah. in his life. Wow. Now, now, this is interesting because fire, this word fire, the, the root word is uh, in the Greek it is a word called pur. You like that? You like this good? I practiced that this morning. Pur. And it's this word that means the very presence of God. Wow. So, so what we're seeing here, it's, in fact, it's the same word as the fire that fell on Pentecost. Wow. 
That's where the fire comes, the root word comes from that word. And so what we see here is Paul is not just stoking a fire in the natural, he's stoking a fire in the supernatural. And it's interesting to me when the devil decides to attack, when he's stoking the fire in his life. Paul wasn't doing anything wrong. Paul was doing the right thing. He was stoking the fire, but the devil came and bit him when he was stoking the fire. See, it's as you build a relationship with God that the devil will always try and stop you. You ever notice how easy it is to like snooze your phone in the morning instead of getting up and reading the Bible because you said it early because you came to conference and you're like, I'm gonna read my Bible every day at 4 a.m. every morning, Monday morning. (laughs) You know, it's like, no. Like it's easy to like come to conference, but it's harder to commit to going to church regularly. Like it's, it's awesome to hang out at a cafe with your friends, but you can't commit to a life group regularly because it's a little bit inconvenient. Yeah. Like it's always easier to do the opposite of building your relationship with God. That's because the devil knows that if he can get your relationship with God, he can stop you from living in the victory. In fact, Pastor John touched on this last night. The, the, the devil in the Garden of Eden, the first attack on mankind, what was the animal that the devil chose? Wasn't a giraffe. Can you imagine that though if it was? Like this massive giraffe just come, ooh, you know, like, who told you? What did you say? I can't hear you, too tall, you know. But the Bible says in Genesis 3 that it was a snake, yep. the craftiest of all animals. Right. From the very beginning, the devil has been trying to disrupt the relationship we have with God. Yeah. And in fact, in John 10, 10, Jesus actually gives us the devil's attack plan. Yeah. What does it say? That the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy Well, what does he come to steal? He comes to steal your delight, your joy, your hope. And when he does, if he gets your delight, what happens is is it kills your dreams. Because it's hard to have a dream when you've got no delight. When you've got no joy in your heart, it's hard to find a dream. Once your dreams have been killed, then he destroys your destiny. And what's interesting is once you feel like your destiny is destroyed, what happens is we become disenfranchised with the church, discouraged in the faith. And then what do we do? We deconstruct. And then after we deconstruct, we then become distant from God and we go, God, you were never there. When really He was always there. But you decided to allow the enemy to bite you and beat you. And that's the cycle that too many of us in our nation are finding ourselves on right now. We've allowed ourselves to be bitten and become beaten. And ever since that moment in the Garden of Eden, that's been His goal to disrupt the relationship, to destroy the church, to destroy the destiny of the church. And he does it through doubt, fear, anger, discouragement, lies, through the snake bites of life, through the tests and trials that we go through. And his whole goal is to break down the relationship with Jesus and in so doing, uh, in so destroying our destiny. At times, I don't know about you, your relationship with God's probably better than mine, let's be honest. That's how we all feel though, isn't it? We look at everybody else and we go, oh, let's be honest, your relationship's probably better than mine. But uh, in my life, I find it hard to connect with God sometimes. Like when it's easy, I'm like, oh man, life is so good. I forget that I need to actually connect with God and thank Him for the good things that I've got. But equally when it's hard, I'm like, God, where are you? You know, it's like, ah! But in, in these moments, what happens is in these moments of disconnect with God, what happens is the distance begins to grow. Let, I mean, you, you have these moments and then it's like, man, the daily distractions that come our way yeah. rob us of that time. Yeah. Some of us need to go buy a physical paper Bible because every time you open your phone in the morning, the alerts are distracting you from the time with God and you're wondering why you can't connect. But because of these daily distractions and the excuses we make to not spend time with God, what happens is the distance grows. And then guilt and shame comes because we know as Christians we should spend time with God. So then the distance increases, guilt and shame increases, and now we're in a death spiral of doom. But friend, I wanna encourage you. That the same God who was close at hand with Adam and Eve is the same God who's close at hand with you. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for a God that even when I'm distant, He never leaves. Even when my mouth is silent, He's still speaking. Even when I'm stuck in my sin, salvation is available. Jesus paid the price of death forever, for everyone, everywhere. And if you're grateful for that Jesus, the Jesus you cling to, give Him some praise right now. Come on, somebody. Glorify Jesus this morning. He's our Jesus. And that's the reason why Paul could shake off the attack. Because he had a radical encounter. What what was being said this morning 
is so true. It's a power encounter with Jesus. It changes everything. Paul had this on the road to Damascus. In fact, his, his original name wasn't Paul, it was Saul. His power, with, his empowering encounter with God, he was riding a horse one day and Jesus turns up. It was so strong, it knocked the P off the start of his name. He went blind. He started walking around for a bit. Everyone called him all. Have you seen all? It'd be like today if, if, if Pastor Brent prays for me, I'm a bit nervous because what if I lose the H on my name? Ari. Anybody seen Ari? You know, like, oh, oh he's Barry now. You know, it's like, okay, behold the Lord. You know, cool. But the, the thing is, is that Paul has this power encounter with Jesus. In the flesh, he, he meets Jesus on the road to Damascus. He, his relationship was so strong. This is the thing, when your relationship with Jesus is strong, it makes the attack of the enemy weak. Yes. When your relationship with Jesus, see the problem is, is many of us cling to the cross, but we're not actually clinging to Christ. Yes. We're clinging to what Jesus has done for us, but we're not clinging to Him Himself. We don't hold the Word of God in our hands. We leave it on the bookshelf gathering dust. Friend, we've got to cling to Christ because when our relationship with Jesus is strong, it makes the attack of the enemy weak and the devil knows it. That's why there's such a... Th- I'm so encouraged by these guys in Rotorua praying in their high school. There's never been more of an attack on the next generation. And you're standing in the gap saying, I'm bringing heaven down to earth. I love that. I love that. I'm here to encourage you today for every single person hearing this message and for everybody who hasn't heard it yet, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We are more than, you are victorious already. Even if you've been bitten a thousand times, you do not have to be beaten because Jesus is alive. The Bible says that it was when He was stoking the fire, the snake bites Him on the hand. And the same friendly faces, right, that welcomed Him to the island are now waiting for Him to die. I think in 2024, maybe we need to check our circle. Because the friendly faces you had before might not be the same friendly faces you have now. Who are the people that you can text and call when you get bitten? We got told that we weren't going to be able to conceive naturally. Who was I supposed to call? Like God had given us a word, like we've been married two weeks. Annalise got a word from Pastor Paul Geerling. Two weeks, we've we've come back from honeymoon for two weeks. We're running a conference in Wellington. And he was like, you stand. Is your husband here? I was sitting next to her and said, stand, many children. <laughs> I was like, well, we're just married. Like, give us some time, you know, like. But the thing is, is that we hung on to that word. We, we were bitten by this doctor's report. I'm so grateful for the men in my life that I was able to call and pray for me time and time and time again. We were bitten, but we weren't beaten. Because now four weeks old, I'm holding my baby boy face to face with a miracle. I'm here to encourage you, no matter what the doctor has said, no matter what you're going through in life, you can be bitten but not beaten. But you need to check your circle. We need friends that are not going to slander us, but are going to stand with us. Some of you are going to go back to friend circles you had before this conference. God has already touched your life in such a radical way. And you're going to be like, man, God did this, God did this. And cynical people, the same friendly faces you thought were friendly, are going to be like, nah, that was just emotional manipulation. Nah, that was just because they had the keyboard mixed quite right. That was just because they had that awesome band on the Saturday morning. It slapped. But that's a lie. The encounter that you have on this weekend is very real. It's life transformational. And we need to check our circle in 2024 and make sure that we've actually got some friendly faces. It's interesting, eh? It's interesting. That Paul, the keyboard, just the keyboard could come and join me for a bit. It would be awesome. Thank you. It's interesting that for Paul, it was as he was stoking the fire of God in his life that he was bitten. What did Paul do? The snake's dangling from his hand. People are watching him, waiting for him to die. This is a real story. It's not hyperbole. It's not, ooh, cool, poetry. You know, like it's a real, this is happening in this moment. And Paul, without hesitation, shakes off the attack. But where does he shake it? Back into the fire. He shakes it back into the thing that the devil tried to stop. See, friend, what God is starting at this conference for you, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. What, the, what, what God is breathing on this weekend 
is the very thing the devil's gonna try and stop. Already in this meeting, you've had moments where the devil's just started to whisper. Because he comes and he lies. Did God really say that? And you might have enough faith to say, yeah, God really said that, God really did that. And the next thing the devil will say, well, then why is it that you're going through what you're going through right now? You tell the devil to be quiet. You tell the devil back into the fire, back into the fire. The problem is for so many of us though, you might've noticed that I'm still holding my snake. This whole message I've been holding on. I've said so many times, he shook it off into the fire. I couldn't let it go, but I'm still holding on. So many of us have been on altar calls before and we've gone, God, I give you everything. But we haven't really, let, we haven't shaken it off, not really. The problem is our generation, we've settled with the snakes we should have shaken off already. And the problem, the problem, the problem, the problem is this, is that if you settle with the snake bites, you quickly become a victim. Our culture celebrates victimhood now. Have you noticed that? We're the champions of the victims. It wasn't too long ago that we all loved the All Blacks because all they would do is conquer all the time. Yeah, I'm proud to be a Kiwi. I'm proud to be the All Blacks. But now it's like, oh, you've got a problem. You've got an issue. You've got, you've got some sort of, oh yeah, well, let's get around you and just support you and I'll cuddle you until you get better. Let's, let's, uh, let's just hold my tongue. Um. <laughs> stop it, stop it. Let's call everything racist. Let, let's, let's make everything a problem. Let's expect handouts from everybody else. Jesus already paid the greatest price. And we're settling with the sin. We're settling with the snake bites. I'm not trying to say anything other than this. We belong to kingdom culture. And kingdom culture is not one that sits on the wayside and goes, woe is me. Kingdom culture says Jesus paid it all. And I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. The problem is, is when we become a victim, Jesus is our comforter and that's all that He is. And so our prayers start to sound like this, woe is me, God, would You help me? Touch me, fill me, I just need more of You. And we become so introspective. And all of a sudden it doesn't matter about our unsaved friends because I'm in need, I've got problems. Because we're holding on and almost just cuddling the snake, like, oh, my problem's there. Just leave. If Jesus is only your comforter, maybe you've never come face to face with the conqueror. I'm here to tell you tonight, the conqueror is in the room. I'm here to tell you tonight, this morning, today, this whole conference, the conqueror is in the room. When Jesus paid the price for you, He said it is finished, it is done. And the veil that separated us from the power and presence of the Holy Spirit was torn in two from top to bottom. So now whoever believes, Whoever believes is more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Come on, this morning it's time to shake off the attack of the enemy. It's time to say no more. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Jesus says, I've given you all authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. Nothing will harm you. It's time to say my culture will not harm me. It's time to say my lack of money will not harm me. It's time to say my education will not harm me. My family dysfunction will not harm me. My anger will not harm me. My porn addiction will not harm me. I am an overcomer. Somebody give Jesus some praise right now. Come on, five seconds of praise. Five seconds of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The rest of the band can come and join me. I have given you authority. It's not I will give you authority. It's not I might give you authority. It's not I give the apostles and the pastors authority. It's I've given you, 14 year old, the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. It's I've given you, I'm the first first Christian in my bloodline. God gave me authority to to trample on snakes and scorpions. You might be the first, but you're the first of many. Do not despise the days of small beginnings. Some of you are here and you're like, I'm only here because of my leader. No, you're here because Jesus wants you here. Because your job is to take what God is depositing in you and take it and spread it like holy fire. And I'm excited and I'm passionate because I believe it. Because it's time, it's time that a generation in Rotorua says, 
We've got stuff. We've been bitten, but we're not beaten. In Levin, we've been bitten, but we're not beaten. In O, O, uh, O Tara. Green, Green Bay, Green Bay, Dream Bay, Holy Bay, Sandy Bay, all the bays. For your bay. No, stop, stop it, stop it. Everybody stand to your feet this morning. We're going to do two things. Oh, yee. You know when the anointing's in the room? It's been here all morning. I've been, it's been so hard to stay focused. Like, we're going to do two things. We're going to take a prophetic step this morning. And we're going to actually say it's finished. We're going to come into agreement with the words Jesus said on the cross. We're going to open the altar. There's deep theological reasons as to why this is called the altar. I probably learned about it last year in my diploma. I've forgotten. How good study. Praise God. But what I do know is that the altar is the place. Every time I've taken a step of faith, we responded to every altar call for a baby. Open wounds. We responded and friend, my life has been changed over and over and over again. It's been altered forever at the altar. And this morning, you need to take a step of faith. Get out of your comfort zone. And you need to bring your snake to the altar. And you need to shake it off and say, it's finished. I'm not going back there. I'm not carrying this out of this conference. So this morning, step out of your seat. We're gonna do that. And then we're gonna pray for one other group. And then I'm gonna hand it over to the team and it's gonna go crazy. It already has. I'm sweating. Praise God. If you're ready. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Are you ready?